Hi, I'm Dr. Incognito. In this video, I'm going to discuss representing functions as power series. We'll begin with the example of a geometric series. The summation n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n. This is equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed, etc. This is a geometric series. The common ratio is equal to x. So the series will converge when the absolute value of the common ratio is less than 1. So if the absolute value of x is less than 1. And moreover, the sum is equal to the first term divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which in this case, the first term is 1. So 1 over 1 minus the common ratio is x. So 1 over 1 minus x. <clears throat> so we can look at this equation, we can look at this in the following way. The function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x is equal to the power series n equals 0 to infinity of x to the n as long as the absolute value of x is less than 1. So this is called a power series representation for the function. And this is a very important example. We can figure out power series representations for many other functions based on this one example. Let's take a look. Let's let the function g of x be the function x squared over 4 plus x cubed. Let's find a power series representation. Or G of X. <clears throat> so what we want to do is take the function X squared over 4 plus X cubed and manipulate it algebraically to make it look as much as possible like 1 over 1 minus X. First, there's a 1 in the numerator. So let's factor X squared from the numerator and then we get 1 over 4 plus x cubed. This looks a little bit more like 1 over 1 minus x. The next important feature of the function f of x equals 1 over 1 minus x is the 1 in the denominator. So to obtain that feature, we will factor 4 from the denominator. So we get x squared over 4 times 1 over 1 plus, and you factor 4 from the denominator, you get 1 plus x cubed over 4. x cubed over 4. <clears throat> so now this is looking a lot more like 1 over 1 minus x. The last important feature is the minus sign. We have a plus here. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this plus into a double negative. So this is equal to x squared over 4 times 1 over 1 minus negative x cubed over 4. So now the quantity in the parentheses here looks just like 1 over 1 minus x, except we have the quantity negative x cubed over 4 in the place of x. So to find a power series for the quantity in the parentheses, we will use this equation by substituting negative x cubed over 4 for x. So we see an x here, here, and here. We will do the substitution in all three places. First I'll just substitute it in here, and then at the end I'll go back and look at the interval of convergence. So substituting, we have the x squared over 4, which is just going to hang around until the end, times the summation n equals 0 to infinity of the quantity negative x cubed over 4 to the n. Instead of x to the n, we have substituted negative x cubed over 4. So we have negative x cubed over 4 to the n. Now let's clean this up. x squared over 4 times the summation. Negative 1 to the n. x cubed to the n 
we multiply the exponents, 3 times n, so x to the 3n, and in the denominator, 4 to the n. Now, one last thing has to be done. We need to take this x squared over 4 here and bring it inside. We need to distribute it over the summation. So I'll do this in two steps. First, I'll just write it down inside. So there's my x squared over 4. I've just brought it inside the summation. And now I'm going to multiply these two fractions together. I'm going to do that by adding the exponents. Negative 1 to the n. In the numerator, we get x to a power. x squared times x to the 3n, we add those together. So we add 2 and 3n, we'll write that as 3n plus 2. And on the bottom, 4 times 4 to the n, that's 4 to the 1 times 4 to the n, add those together, 4 to the n plus 1. Okay, so that's our power series representation. Let me wind up by finding the interval of convergence, and then I'll write the whole thing down in uh, final form. So the interval of convergence. In this inequality, absolute value of x less than 1, we replace the x again with negative x cubed over 4. So we get the absolute value of negative x cubed over 4 is less than 1. But this is the same as the absolute value of x cubed over 4 is less than 1, because the absolute value of negative 1 is 1, and the absolute value of 4 is 4. Now multiply by 4, and the absolute value of x cubed is the same as the absolute value of x quantity cubed. So that is less than 4. And lastly, take the square, uh, cube root. The absolute value of x is less than the cube root of 4. So that's our interval of convergence. So the final answer, let's write that here. Put it all together, the function g of x, which was equal to x squared over 4 plus x cubed, can be written as the summation n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times x to the 3n plus 2 over 4 to the n plus 1, as long as the absolute value of x is less than the cube root of 4. Uh, one last thing I'd like to do is let's take a look at this series term by term. When n is 0, negative 1 to the 0 is 1, and then x to the 3n plus 2 when n is 0 is x squared, and 4 to the n plus 1 is 4 to the 1. So the first term of this power series is x squared over 4. Then when n is 1, negative 1 to the 1 is negative 1. When n is 1 here, we get 3 plus 2 is 5. And when n is 1 here, uh, we get 4 squared, which is 16. I think one more term and we'll see the pattern. If n is 2, negative 1 squared is plus 1. x to the 8, put in 2 for n, that's 6 plus 2 divided by 4 cubed, which is 64. So without looking at the formula, we could probably guess the next term. We see an alternating pattern from the minus 1 to the n. The powers of x are going up by 3. That's because of the 3n. So the next one's going to be x to the 11. And on the bottom, we're getting the powers of 4. 4 to the power n plus 1. So the next power of 4, 4, 4 squared, 4 cubed, would be 4 to the 4th which is uh, 256. So there's a look at the first few terms of the series. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you found it instructive.